In this video in the SQL Fundamental Series, we're going to look at aggregating data using what we call aggregate functions such as count, maximum, average. And if you want to follow along with the video, you'll need your Oracle account. We'll be working with the student team's database. We won't actually use HR in this particular video. When working with a lot of data in a database, we often want to group data and aggregate it in some way. For example, you might have a school that wants to list how many students are in each course in the fall and spring semesters. So we're not looking for individual student data, but we want to look at the year 2010, for example. We want to look at the fall semester, look at the English 301 course, and find out how many students are in or were in that class. So we're not looking at individual student data for the, those students enrolled in the class. Another example of aggregating data would be to list the current semester's courses, the majors of the students in those courses, and the number of students in those majors. You would filter the data for the current year and semester in the WHERE clause, even though the year and semester are not shown in the out, output shown here. So we are showing a course, English 301. We have all these students in that course. 17 of the students are in a, uh, have declared history as their major, 19 have education, and 10 have business. So this is an example of how we might want to aggregate data. Aggregation is done with the group by clause. This determines how you're going to group the data, and this comes after the WHERE clause if you're using a WHERE clause in the query. Example aggregate functions are count, average, sum, and these are actually listed in the very first clause, which is the select clause. So in our uh, first simple example, we're going to look at uh, how many students are on each team. We have our select clause with the team ID, and then we have an aggregate function, which is count. We're working with the students table listed in the from clause, followed by group by and we're grouping by team ID. So when we run this query, what we would get is IT Pros has a uh, count of five students, System Designers has a count of three. We have a null, which means we actually have two students with no assigned team ID. It's important to know that any field in the select clause that is not an aggregate function has to be included in the group by clause. So looking at a variation on our first example, I'm going to show the team ID and the team name, and I've got the aggregate function to count the students. The from clause has two tables, teams and students. The where clause joins the uh, team table to the student table on the primary key, foreign key relationship. Then in the group by clause, we have team ID and we have team name because these two fields in the select clause are not aggregate functions and they have to be in the group by clause. And so we run that query and we get the results. Now we're showing team name and we have IT pros with the five students that we saw in the previous example. But Maybe you noticed there were actually five rows of output in the first example and there were only four in it when we looked at it in the uh, previous slide. What this is showing you is that if you have two tables joined together and there's data in either one of the tables that's not related to data in the other table, then that data in effect drops out or disappears if you will. This is not an error. This is just something that you need to be aware of, and we will talk about how to deal with that when we get into the advanced video series. But as we see here, we have the null, which shows that we have two students without a team. And then when we run the second uh, variation on this example, where we use the team table along with the student table, we do not see those two students. We also actually have teams for which no students have been assigned, and they don't show up here either. Let's look at some other aggregate functions. 
let's look at student evaluation scores doing an average, a maximum, and a minimum. But before we do that, let's review the data model and see what tables we need. We'll need to work with students and evaluations, and we're going to join that on student ID to evaluate ID. There's another relationship which joins student ID to evaluator ID, but we're not going to work with that. We will also work with the eval item scores, and we'll have to join that to evaluations. So here is our example. Uh, where we're going to calculate the average, the maximum, and the minimum. So in the select clause, I've listed student, team ID, and eval item ID. And then I have uh, added the average function, the maximum function, and the minimum function. And we see the results below. I also have the join clause joining students to evaluations and then taking that subset of data and joining it to eval item scores. Notice that the group by clause has both team ID, and, or excuse me, student ID and eval item ID because these are the two fields from the select clause that are not aggregate functions. So let's compare the detailed data versus the aggregate data for a student. I'm going to set a WHERE clause where I filter only on student B, K, R, Y, B, CRY. And we see that that student on that team has received three, con uh, three contribute scores. The 90 and the 70 give us a total of 240. Now when I do the aggregate function, and so I'm doing my average, my maximum, and my minimum, I now see that B cry has a, an average aggregate score or an average yeah an average score of con, for contribute of 80. So it's the 240 divided by the three scores that they re, that he or she received. So let's look at a couple more aggregate functions. What I have is I've added to the previous example I've added a sum and I'm looking at total points. So we see that here. We see the 240, which sums up the three scores received uh, by evaluators for B cry. I also have a count distinct. And the count distinct is a way to make sure that if you have the same data showing up in more than one row, that that particular data item only gets counted once. So you count distinct is something you would use to make sure that you don't count the same basic, basically the same data more than once. So this is showing a number of the number of evaluations. Just as a simple example, let's switch over to SQL Developer, and I'm going to do select count, and I'm going to count the foreign key field in the students table. And I'll call that team count from students. And I'm going to run that query. So that even though I might look at that and think I'm going to count team ID, uniquely I'm not. I'm seeing actually that there are 13 students, and so every row, every team ID, however many times it repeats, is part of that count. But if I add distinct and run that query, then I see that I actually only have four teams in terms of team IDs in this. So count distinct can be uh, an important feature to use. So what we've looked at here is how to group data using the group by clause. We've looked at examples of count and count distinct along with sum, average, minimum, and maximum.